The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets in positive territory, clawing back some of the losses of yesterday. Quite an up and down battle yesterday, right? SPs, man, we were up to 5530. In the S&Ps, just after 1 p.m. Yesterday, yesterday, markets dived down almost 100 points. Pretty remarkable. And you traded up 100 points. So 10 in the morning, 54.32. 1 in the afternoon, 55.30. What do we get it to? 55, what's the exact high there? 55.33. So it was 100 points up, 100 points down, 2% up, 2% down. Volatility everywhere in this market. And this morning, we're kicking things off positive by about 7 tenths percent. We see where we are right in the middle of the trading day yesterday, basically. 54.79 in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we're up 173 points. 19,166 right now. You get the Dow up 225 points, 40,418 in the Russell, continuing to show strength. Russell, right near the highs of yesterday, you're up by percent in the you're up by 30 points at 2270. Bitcoin, 68,000 on the dot. How about it? Crude at a price tag of 77.65. We're off by 65 pennies right now in the price of crude. Quite a day to the downside on gold yesterday, getting back a little bit of that action on gold. Come on, charts. Come on, catch up for me. What's going on? Come on, charts. Let's go. There we go. I see it. Real time data is coming. Catch up for me, charts. There's your gold contract. So we're rolling over is what's going on as well. So gold's up $21. We're showing at $24.21. But we were at $23.60 yesterday. So you're not up $60 in gold. You have a rollover causing a spike of about $40 to the upside. Then you have a $20 extension to the upside. So watch the rollovers as they happen today. I think you have the same thing happen in crude. No, what? I was just looking at something. Was it the markets that rolled over too? No, not quite. Nonetheless, gold rolls over its contract from one to the next, and you're at 2421 right now. You jump over to notes and bonds. We got inflation data this morning. The Fed's preferred inflation gauge, the PCE, showing pretty moderate inflation. What do we have? We got higher price, lower yield right now. The 10 year up by 10 ticks at 111.04 right now. The 30 year up by 17 ticks right now. It could be a wild day in the markets. And before we get into it, folks, don't forget our man Larry Pesavento. He's kicking it off right now. Live trading Fridays with Larry. They're all in the room. They're getting ready. It's beginning right now. It could be a great day. You never know what's going to happen on those days, right? He does it on the second and the fourth day of every month. So he's got it on right now on July 26th. If you sign up now on July 26th, folks, what's cool is you sign up right now for the 26th, okay? You're getting the second Friday in August, which is August 9th. And you're getting the second Friday. Uh, excuse me. You're getting the first Friday in August. All right, let me start over. You're getting the second Friday in August, which is the 9th, and the fourth Friday, which is the 23rd. So you can technically almost squeeze in there right now, one of these dates where you get actually three of them if you want. I encourage you to stay on. It's an outstanding deal. You can use the code Larry July 24 to save $50 off the first month. So you get in there at $245. You get three hours of live trading with, Friday, with Larry in there, and they're in there right now. And it could be an interesting one as we got some inflation data, and that's where we're going to kick it off. So inflation data, as Bloomberg puts it, the preferred inflation gauge and the PCE is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. They'll tell you themselves, okay? Rose at a mild pace in June. And I'd say that's putting it pretty mildly. No pun intended because, yeah, we got some weak numbers in terms of inflation. The PCE, 0.1%. Core PCE, 0.2%. Year over year, 2.6%. Keep in mind, the Fed is at five and a quarter to 5.5%, folks. Very tough to say, to make the case that they don't have the room for any type of a cut at this point when these are the Fed's preferred inflation gauges on a monthly basis. Core is at 0.2 on a yearly basis, right? 2.6 is the number there. Yeah, across the board. 
And as they put it, Friday's report offers some encouraging evidence that the Fed's tightening campaign is making its way through the economy without causing too much damage. Officials are widely expected to keep their benchmark interest rate unchanged at next week's meeting. But investors are betting the first rate cut will come in September. So the spending breakdown, inflation adjusted outlays for services and merchandise each rose 0.2 percent. Housing and utilities led increases in services spending. Vehicles and recreational items propelled advances in goods. Signs of cooling in the labor market are starting to translate into less purchasing power. Wages and salaries rose just 0.3 percent in June, half of the prior month's pace. On an inflation-adjusted basis, disposable income growth slowed to 0.1%. Savings rate, 3.4% lowest since December of 2022. Yeah, additional data due next week, including the government's monthly report on employment, will offer the latest insight on how well income growth is holding up. So the market takes that one in stride. And what do we have? We have yields. Pulling back, we get the 10-year at 4.21% right now. We have the market enjoying that as we got a little bit of a pop with the S&Ps up by 37 right now. And it is interesting when you take a look at, on a monthly basis, the S&Ps, right? It's been quite a volatile month. Maybe we'll get a little volatility today. Great day for Larry's live trading on Friday when you get some inflation data. We got a little bit of a lift. We hit 100 points in both directions yesterday, folks. We might get a wild one today. We'll see on the heels of that. Yes, we got a pop in the beginning of the day. But as we've seen many times, the first move is not the, always the move that holds, especially once we reach the opening bell. It is interesting, though, when you look at the S&P on a monthly basis, okay, we barely have a red bar. This bar opened at 55.34. You're only 55 points away from a green bar in the S&P futures this month. We got three trading days left next month. OK, so all the hoopla about quite a pullback, right? Quite a pullback yesterday. I just showed you we had 100 points from the highs yesterday to where we closed. You might get a green bar in the S&Ps on a monthly basis. So if you think the volatility is over, if you think this pullback is over, pay attention, man, because I'm not saying it's going to tank. But if we are going to get a pullback, OK, it hasn't even begun technically because we are right near potentially a green monthly bar in the S&Ps. You're only 54 points away from a green bar. We opened the S&P month for July at 55.34. We're trading at 54.79. You did make it all the way to 57.21, but interesting nonetheless, right? Yeah, pretty interesting indeed. NASDAQ, a little bit of a different story. NASDAQ 100. You got to get to a price point of 19,970. So you're talking about 800 points. Quite a different story. Tech stocks pulling back, as we know. You check out the Dow on a monthly basis. We get a green bar. Right? There it is in July. We opened at 39,560. We're positive by 900 points on the Dow. And how about the Russell for some context, man? The Russell, we're positive by more than 200 points, almost a 10% positive run on the Russell 2000. So you talk about a rotation, man. In spades, as my dad would say. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll come back. We got a lot to talk about. We'll take a look at some equities. We'll go through some of those tech stocks. SP's up by 38, NASDAQ 100 up by 175. All the markets in green territory. And don't forget, there's still time, folks. Get over there if you're interested. Check out live trading. It's Fridays with Lucky. Just take the offer right now. And don't forget about Tiger Dollars. Get those Tiger Dollars first to add those savings. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Tigers, it's back the annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 37, NASDAQ 100 up by 137. Let's check out some of those tech stocks right now. You kick off Amazon shares. Quite the volatility yesterday. Amazon, you're going to get a lift by more than $2 in the pre-market to 182.10 right now. The big dog, Apple, they're going to catch a lift. I mean, you get the NASDAQ 100, I'm almost a full percent, right? Apple shares up by almost $2 to 219. Google shares, they've been on one path this week, and that's lower. They're barely flat this morning as everything else is getting <clears throat> a lift. Now, you came into earnings at 185, and you're going to be down 10% from where you were just as it closed on Thursday. You're trading in about 169. Meta took it on the chin with advertising revenue on Google having a problem with YouTube. They're trading at 453. You were at 495, but you're trading at 460 this morning, so they're going to be up about $7. You jump over to Netflix shares. Netflix shares up a bit in the pre-market to 639 right now. You jump over to the Tesla shares. Tesla shares up as well to 223. NVIDIA. Yeah, it was quite a volatile session on NVIDIA yesterday. You're going to be up by about $3 on NVIDIA. And yeah, Tesla trading at about 223. All right. So it is an interesting one out here. Even How about Citron and Andrew Left? Right? They're coming after him, man. And this one's going to be an interesting one. So this is criminal as well. Right? Not on, you know, the criminal usually doesn't come, but they're coming with the criminal charges as well. The U.S. accuses short seller Andrew Left of securities fraud. Citron Capital, he's been in the headlines forever, it seems like, with his short selling manifestos. The Justice Department says he committed securities fraud. They allege that he used his online platform to generate about twenty million. I think the number was sixteen million. I was reading. I was reading the journal article, the Bloomberg piece that they had, and it's going to be interesting to, to see the details because you know the 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 general allegations here. 
We'll see where the details come in in terms of how they make it. The SEC alleges he would make recommendations on a stock which he had short or long positions on, sometimes giving a target price which he thought the stock would trade at. Left, however, would then capitalize on those price movements and quickly reverse his positions at prices far higher or lower than what he reported. Now... This is the journal article on the same deal, okay? U.S. accuses prominent short seller left of fraud. They say he manipulated stocks by issuing misleading research reports that led to quick trading profits. Now, what they say in here, okay, is that – and I, and this is where it's going to be interesting if, if, if this is, becomes manipulation and fraud. So – the indictment says he manipulated prices of at least 15 stocks over a five-year period, earning illegal profits, their quote, illegal profits, of $16 million. He sometimes suggested stock prices would fall by 50% or more, but closed his positions after share prices had moved only a couple percent. Okay? I mean, that's not criminal on its own right. OK, just because you make a statement that you think it's going to fall by more, there is such a thing as freedom of press, freedom of speech, excuse me, freedom of speech. OK, just because you think a stock is going to fall by more than that. Right. Um, did he have accounts out there that he wasn't disclosing his trading in? Right. That's going to be some. How is he working with other hedge funds is going to become an important one as well. Prosecutors accused Left of hiding ties to hedge funds that got early notice of his research and, in some cases, passing off their trading ideas as his own. I think this is somehow where the details are going to hinge, how those relationships exist, were they disclosed, etc., and how that's going to come into the criminality of what is being accused the hedge funds traded in advance of his reports becoming public that's where public knowledge becomes public information right and shared a portion of profits with him now i think it was the uh, ambani right how do you say the gentleman's name the indian gentleman that he came after um adani right or whatever it is that one was reported he was working with hedge funds they were making the trades he got a portion of those profits he made a tiny pence of what they were making when asked by investigators in january 2021 about one of those episodes left lied and said he never 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 gave prior notice of a report to a hedge fund in exchange for compensation according to the indictment um when accused of criminality 101 don't talk to the feds <laughs> right number one if you lie to the feds that is a crime in its own right. If you lie to local police, that's not a crime. If you lie to federal investigators, that in and of itself is a crime, okay? So first of all, where were his lawyers? What was he doing even talking to anybody? Because number one, that's a crime in itself when he's talking to federal investigators, lying to them, okay? And number two, then that gets used against him in the eventual indictment, which there it is in the press. What was he doing Right. Where were his lawyers? Ego is something that always gets in the way, especially of somebody like this. Left also misled in the market by disseminating reports that suggested he managed money for other investors when he only invested his own funds. So what do you have? You have lies. You have manipulation. Um, you know, and it's a bummer that this is buried this part because this is the article. They bury the lead here. OK, this is the part that is criminal. Right. Public information disseminated to hedge funds first, then to the public, right? And then lying about whether you did that, lying about whether you manage money for other investors versus yourself, lying about the trades that you had, reporting those trades as your own or somebody else's versus, okay, don't get caught up, which is a bummer, when they talk about how – he says that it's going to go down 50% and he takes the profit before it reaches that level. You can do that, all right? And what's interesting here is everybody talks their own book. It's not a it's not a problem when you have every single person out there talking up equities, okay? And then capitalizing on that and potentially selling out before it reaches the target you're looking for. But somehow when somebody does it on the short side, that becomes illegal. 
He sometimes suggested stock prices will, would fall by 50% or more but close his position after they moved only a couple percent. That doesn't matter at all. That is not criminal, okay? But the last part of that article, yeah, that definitely could become criminal when you're working with hedge funds, you're giving them the information first, they're making trades before that information becomes public, you're lying about whether you have those relationships that exist, and then you're lying about whether you're managing other people's money or you're just making trades on your own. So um, nonetheless, it is a criminal indictment. And he is in trouble this morning. And that's a grand jury invitement, indictment. So it is out there and they're coming. The indictment returned by an L.A. grand jury. Yeah, essentially trading on his name and reputation. And, you know, it is pretty remarkable. You have that type of money. You don't got the lawyers to back it up. What are you doing talking to the feds, lying to them? 101. All right, we're coming back for the open, folks. We'll take a look at some of the other equities moving this morning. Stay tuned. We got the opening bell coming up next. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. We have a market. Over the past year, the market has been consistent in a strong upward trajectory. But now we're just starting to see signs of volatility. Don't let this volatility scare you. Times like these are when big money can be made. That's why I'm excited to announce a live trading event hosted by yours truly. Join me on Friday, August 2nd at 9 a.m. all the way until noon Eastern Standard Time while I trade the S&P, the Qs, the NDX 100, and I'm going to be trading the one-day options on the S&P as well as the NDX. To make this deal even better, I'm offering one month free of my Market Insight newsletter, which has beaten the market by almost a factor of five this year, in addition to a signed copy of my book, The Art of Timing the Trade. On top of trading the market live, I'll discuss how I plan my trading day, what times I've found to be the best to trade, how I decide to enter and exit trades, and so much more. I can't wait to see all you folks there. Make sure you sign up soon so you can get early access to my Market Insights and secure your spot. Wow! Let's get them, folks. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. We got markets open. S&Ps, they're giving back some of those gains. S&P is up by 29, NASDAQ 100 up by 130, Dow up by 220, and the Russell up by 1.3%. Markets give it back a little bit. We check in on commodities. We take a look at gold. Gold contract up by $24, trading at 24.23. Check out that VIX, right? VIX up to 19.36 yesterday. 
excuse me, we take a look at the dollar index right now. Dollar index backing off. That's helping gold, 104.26. That, of course, you got a weak dollar. Why do you got a weak dollar? You got a weak dollar because we have yields pulling back on weak inflation data with the 10-year now up 12 ticks right now at 111.06. We're pushing the highs of yesterday. That is correlating to a 10-year yield of 4.2%. 420 for our man Elon Musk, right on the dot, 4.20%. The yield on the 10-year right now, and you take a look at this thing on a little bit of a longer-term basis, been quite a run. We got higher highs and higher lows. You're probably coming back to at least a 111.15, which is where we were in the middle of July, right? That higher price point before you ebbed a bit. And yeah, we're probably inching back to where you were at 113.12. And pretty remarkable, you were there at the beginning of the year. But I would say all the data is pointing to five and a quarter to 5.5%. We got quite a GDP number yesterday coming in at 2.8% for the prior quarter. But everything else lining up to where there is some weakness in this market that is probably indicative that five and a quarter to 5.5% is probably, and I'm being kind, it, you know, my opinion, yeah, it's too high right now. You don't need a number that high. Okay, you can still be restrictive in this con economy. I could probably make a legitimate case that the Fed could still be restrictive at an interest rate of four and a half to four and three quarters percent, at least, if not even going a little bit lower than that, right? If you're at four and a quarter to 4.35 percent, four, four and three quarters percent, excuse me, as in 4.5 to 4.75, which would be a, a solid three quarter point cuts from where we're at right now. Yeah, there's a very real case that you could make the case that you are still in a restrictive stance if you make three quarter point cuts and that's where the market is making their stance right now so we'll see where we go from there all right it is olympic season you gotta love olympic season right now things are kicking off in pretty dramatic fashion with a whole mess in france going on with the rail lines down okay french officials say fires were set alongside several lines of the high-speed trains causing outages that could last for days sabotage hits france rail lines as the olympics begin um absolute turmoil going on over there quite a bummer man you make the trip you spend all that money rail lines of course in europe a preferred mode of transportation and yeah, they are having some real problems here. The rail network was the target of a major act of sabotage, sabotage on Friday, just hours before the opening ceremony, bringing services on several high-speed rail lines to a halt in disruptions that are expected to last for days. Fires set at around 4 a.m. local time at three sites around the rail network. And this is kind of going to where I found myself saying, you know, when we had our tech meltdown because of CrowdStrike, just be aware that this stuff's going to happen. OK, we're in a, a day and age where technology is everything. It's going to happen. Things are going to get disrupted. There's not much you're going to be able to do. And just make sure you're protected to a certain degree. Yeah. Bummer of a way to start over there. Uh, how about the Wall Street Journal with the hard hitting news? Watch out for the pools in the Olympics. The dirty secret. Everyone pees in the pool. I found it interesting. This one was on the front page of the journal. All right. And yeah, it's the Olympics. They're, they 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 make money off of clicks just like everybody else. But it was interesting when they talk about the swimmers there. If you're a competitive swimmer at this level, you're hydrating. So the swimmers, they all hydrate as best they can right up until the minute before they're racing. I found that interesting because, number one, hydration's everything. We know that. OK, but it is interesting that you're hydrating, hydrating, hydrating before you get in that pool. And you're adding weight, which I found interesting. And then they get into these suits that are skin-tight suits to give them a torpedo-like fashion, right? Sometimes it takes them 15, 20 minutes to get into these suits that they're racing in. And so nobody wants to get out of the pool and get out of that suit, go to the bathroom, get back in. Uh, nonetheless, nonetheless, chlorine pretty much takes care of the job. But it seems like everybody's saying that uh, I've probably peed in every single pool I swim in. Lily King, three-time Olympian for Team USA. That's just how it goes. Nonetheless, chlorine gets it done, it seems like they say. Um, but yeah, Olympics. Gotta love the Olympics, man. Just competition, right? There's no, no better reality TV show than competition. That's why everybody loves sports, okay? Not everybody, but that is why people love sports. It's the ultimate reality show, man. You are watching, and when it's the Olympics, you're watching people that have trained four years for the ultimate competition and sometimes they live and die on what i mean if you're running the 100 meter man you're, you're living and dying on 10 seconds you train four years for a 10 second performance and if you don't get it done during those 10 seconds four years of training go to waste 
And so you gotta um, you gotta love that type of devotion and competition. And yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. What else we got? I got a couple articles pulled up. Oh yeah, how about this one for the Olympics, man? This one kind of speaks. I was talking about the World Series of Poker last week in terms of ten million dollars up top, saying, "Hey, anytime there's that type of money up top, you better be aware that everybody's going to do everything in their power to gain an edge." And when you're at the Olympics, the same thing is true. And the Canada coach is out of the women's team because she was using drones to spy on the competition. Just like that, man. The Canadian Olympic Committee said new information from Soccer Canada showed that suspended women's coach was likely aware of the drone use that has caused a scandal at the Paris Olympics. They removed her on Thursday and uh, her suspension by Canada Soccer after she was suspended by Canada Soccer. They follow complaints from New Zealand that Canada flew drones over two of their training sessions before the two sides met in their opening, which Canada won two to one. That's got to be tough, man, if you're on that New Zealand team, right? You got the Canada team using drones to watch your practices. They beat you 2 1. And uh, there's no making up for that, man. As I just said, right? You spend four years for that. Um,. And nonetheless, she's out. But, you know, it's just a, just always keep in mind, man. You know, being around enough gambling and poker, I've seen that. And, and I was around online, okay, when there were a lot of ways for people to gain edges in a way that was not kosher with the rules, okay? And I, I'm cautious to not call it illegal because that's where it gets a little bit gray area. And, you know, you're seeing Andrew left with Citron today, okay? It goes with the market as well. And that's where you, you always want to make sure you're protected. And the other thing is always make sure that you're not betting everything on one bet. I'll give you a great example. So years ago, there was a poker site called Ultimate Bet, okay? And this came about, and there was a super user. And what ended up happening was is that this user could basically see everybody's cards, Okay. Now, these types of conspiracies were always around, and what had happened was an owner of the site previous who had sold the site created a backdoor for himself where he could create a user account where he could see everybody else's cards, and he was playing high-stakes poker, okay? And so what you had is you had some of the best poker players out there, young kids, because at that time you had all these young kids who were in their 20s, if not even sometimes in their teens, playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars against this user. And they couldn't understand how they were losing because the person was playing so bad. I'm going to finish this story up, but it's a lesson in stop losses and protection. Stay tuned, folks. we got S&Ps climbing higher by 40 points. We'll be right back. We'll talk some more equities. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school. 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All right, folks, we got S&Ps up by 34, NASDAQ 100. We give it back a bit. We're up by 95. Dow catches a bit up by 400 points right now. So just to finish up that story, okay, what it had to do with is you had people facing a super user in poker, okay? And what they couldn't understand is how they were losing to somebody that was playing so extraordinarily bad by theory, okay? And so what they did, though, as a result is that they push their limits past where they should have. Let's say normally if they have a million dollar bankroll, right? Maybe they cut their losses at 50,000, maybe they cut them at 100,000. But no, they said, I cannot stop playing this person. They are playing so bad, I'm gonna push my limits past where I normally would. And you had people lose extraordinary amounts of money to people and they had no chance. So to, to translate that to a lesson in the market, never think you know more than you think you do. OK, number one, and always keep your stop losses. I mean, it's the same thing with a trade, right? You might say, no way I can give up on this trade. There's no way. I know I'm right. I know that this thing's going to fail soon. I know it's going to take off like a rocket ship soon. Um, always be aware to protect yourself because it was a real shame. You had people that never stopped playing this user because they couldn't believe that somebody that was playing two nine off suit and going all in on them on random spots was taking all their money. And meanwhile, they could see their cards the whole time. Sometimes there's just fraud going on out there. Okay. And be aware that those variables might exist. Be aware they might exist in the market as well and make sure you protect yourself at all costs because i saw it happen in poker all the time um you know you see you got coaches out there with drones in the olympics flying over practices right if you're gambling on sports out there you might say there's no way the candy the canadians can lose to new zealand there's no way. well guess what they're out there cheating okay there's cheating going on everywhere out there in the market, in sports, in gambling, everywhere. People seek an edge if they can gain it. So remember that one as well. Uh, we'll stay with a little bit of sports. Have you seen the F1 show, Formula One Drive to – what is it called? Drive to Survive. Yeah, that's what it is. If you haven't checked it out in terms of competition, check it out, man. When I was recovering from surgery, I checked that one out. Max Verstappen out there. Quite a beast for F1 racing and – um it is a great series, man, for sure. And so this one's interesting. So he's getting a 10-place grid penalty, okay? And this is taking place at the Belgian Grand Prix. You have a certain quota of engines. So they can only use four engines is what you can use out there, is what it is. And let's see, they get down to it, yeah. Uh, and so this will be the fifth. And so they knew they were going to get a grid penalty, but they're thinking this is one of the easiest tracks to overplace. Decision to fit a fifth engine at... That racetrack is tactical as the circuit's one of the easier tracks to overtake during the season. So if they're going to replace that engine, they only get a quota 
for internal combustion engines set at four. If you go to five, you get a penalty to make sure the teams are just not blowing through different parts to create some type of parity across the board there. The amount of power unit components used by each driver per season is limited. They're coming in at number five. And yeah, I got to love the competition, man. If you haven't checked out that program, I encourage you to check it out for sure. All right. What else we got going on in terms of the market out here? Yeah, well, this one's interesting in terms of uh, – we'll just stay with stories, man, because, you know, how about Ego? You got the Sinaloa Cartel co-founder just showing up in Texas, landing in Texas, along with the son of El Chapo, and now they're in U.S. custody. Pretty remarkable, right, how these guys are just roaming around the U.S., landing in Mexico. The drunk pin, kingpin was arrested by U.S. agents Thursday after a high-ranking Sinaloa Cartel member tricked him – into flying into Texas is how they put it. And you also got the son of El Chapo as well. 76 years old. Co-founded co the Sinaloa cartel three decades ago. And uh, so they got them locked up. $15 million reward. Not a lot of money when you think about the amount of money that they're playing with in terms of those drug cartels over there. But pretty interesting that they're flying into Texas. Seems like that's one of the places you might want to avoid if you're running the Sinaloa cartel. But Ego. In the same way, always getting getting in the way of um, a lot of things in life. All right, what else we got? Well, we'll talk a little bit of tech. Why not? You got Bank of America says the cooling economy will crack big tech rally even more. Tech dominant dominance is one bad payroll away from ending is how you have analyst Hartnett put it out there. That's Bank of America's Michael Hartnett. Uh, tech dominance, one bad payroll. Stocks could flash contrarian sell signal if breath improves is what they're talking about here. In a note on Friday, he said recent data suggested the global economy was quote unquote ill. And that we are one bad payroll away from big tech stocks losing their dominance. The upward trajectory of tech stocks has been derailed in the past two weeks as investors flock to small caps. We've seen that happening, man. About $2.6 trillion has been erased from the market cap of firms in the tech-heavy NASDAQ 100. Still, Hartnett said equity bulls were holding on to be belief that a correction was healthy. And yeah, this kind of points to just basically what I was talking about at the beginning. Context is important, folks, and if you think that the, the pullback is over, just put your charts on a monthly basis, okay? That's the weekly. On a monthly basis, these markets are barely registering red bars. Yes, you got a red bar on the monthly on the NASDAQ, but you're not even back to where you were in June, okay? And that's after doubling in share price from a year and a half ago, and the S&Ps, as I mentioned, were now what? Where's the open in there again? 55.34? Yeah, we're only 54 points away from a green bar in the S&Ps. And of course, we know the seven stocks in the S&P 500, the Magnificent Seven, have been carrying that index higher across the board. And so, yes, be careful. If you think the pullback has begun with dramatic fashion, we haven't even begun anything yet. As we haven't even begun a pullback, you barely have a red bar on the S&P 500 right now, and you're trading at 54.82. After a year and a half ago, we were trading at practically 3,500 in that index. Pretty remarkable. Let's check out how some of those tech stocks are kicking off the trading session on Friday. NVIDIA shares. They give it back slightly on the open, but you're up by 1.3%. Amazon shares up by 6 tenths percent right now. Microsoft shares up by about 2 tenths. We check on our CrowdStrike positive but they give it up on the open as well positive by nine tenths percent it's been quite a week and a half for them crowdstrike trading up two dollars up eight tenths percent we check in on google shares uh google continuing to decline you're trading at 166 from about 186 coming into their earnings on tuesday yeah quite the number indeed with google off by another 1.4 percent for their numbers now we got google we got tesla next week we get Amazon out with their numbers. I'm going to pull it up. I believe we get Meta out with their numbers as well. Okay. We got Meta up by 1.6%. Decent numbers. And we get a couple other tech stocks. I think we got Microsoft numbers out with theirs up by two tenths percent. I'll pull that up after the break. Microsoft up by a dollar right now. Let's check in on some of the airlines continuing to recover from their woes. Delta. Looks like maybe the, the max pain issue is over. They were down to 42 yesterday. You're up to 43.67 so far. You got United, yeah, barely flat right now. We check in on Southwest. You'll be able to pick your seats on Southwest. They like that number yesterday. 
You're down by 1.8% right now on Southwest, though. We check in on JetBlue to finish it up. JetBlue shares up by 1.9%. Dow up by 500 points, holding well. Look at that run in the Dow on the open, man. We open it. Where you were at 9.30. One more segment, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN Education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 75, markets in the green, Dow up by 500 plus, NASDAQ trimming those gains a bit up by 85, and we got a special guest. We got our man Tommy O'Brien. Hey, you want to wear your headset so you can talk to him? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, let's put your headset on so you can talk to him. All right. Put it on. You going to do your show? Yeah. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Yeah. Hi. What's the, what's hi. the market doing? You got your dinosaurs? I got my dinosaurs. Who's this one? This one's blue. And what about this one? What kind is he? He's T-Rex. He's a T-Rex. Does he have big teeth? Yeah, he has big teeth. What's your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaur is T-Rex. Oh, because he's got the big teeth. I know. I know. I know, huh? Yeah. What day is today? Let's see. No. What day is today? Today is... Friday. Friday. Yeah, is it the weekend? Wait, is that blue? That's blue. You see yourself on the TV? I know, huh? And with the patch on? Yeah, I got my patch on. I know, huh? Daddy's eyes getting better. Yeah. Well, he has a patch on, too. Does Blue look like he has a patch, too? No, he's okay. That's just his eye. 
They got their eyes and their teeth. Yeah. Rawr. They're going to fight. Rawr. And you got your ball, huh? Yeah. There you are. You're on the stage. There you are. You see yourself? Are you on the show? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi everybody. Um, yeah. The show today is... Uh, we're we're doing some show. We're doing some show. He sits in here with his headset. He does his show. We tell everybody about the markets. Yeah, we do the show. Are we going to go visit Grandpa later at the office? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go visit Grandpa. Hey, guys, we're where? Tell him. We are. Yeah. yeah. Later we are. Later we're going to go see him. Yes, because it's Friday. I need... Yeah. There you go. Today I saw you on the That's a good one. You tell him. Um, All right. We're going to wrap it up. Say thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Everybody have a good weekend. Everybody have a good weekend. And we'll see you on Monday. And we'll see you on Monday. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.